Let's move on now to uh, section 1.2, and now we get to uh, a little more interesting things now. And uh, we're going to be talking about specifically uh, functions, and uh, you know what is a function, um, and within the function, how do we find domain and range, and uh, so forth. So this is where it gets a little more fun now. No, not so much maybe review, but now actually deepening um, your knowledge of functions because you were introduced to functions in Algebra 1. Uh, but it was probably very uh, shallow learning of it, and it's just because you didn't learn much in, in that um, class, but now we actually go really deep into what a function is and, and graphing them and doing all kinds of manipulations to them. So let's go ahead and start here. What I want to do is first define what, what a function is, and I want us to have a clear-cut, precise way of understanding it so that you are by no doubt have no misconceptions and you have a an easy way of understanding what a function is okay so let me first give you the nerdy definition which which this just comes from our textbook and then i'm gonna uh break this up into something that actually makes sense here so so, so function f is a set a to set b is a relation that assigns to each element x in the set a exactly one element y in the set b okay so that is really hairy and nerdy, and what the heck does that mean? So let me just make some uh, some sense of this, okay? It says uh, a function f from a set A to a set B. So what they're saying is this. So we have some kind of set. So like basically I'm going to think of it as like some bowl. This is going to be like my A, and then I have another bowl and that I have my B right here. Okay, so I have a set A and a set B. And then within my bowl, I have like, um, I got like little marbles, right? So maybe like this marble is going to be called marble one, marble two, marble three, marble four. And this one also has, maybe this is called like marble 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so a function F, so we're going to call, okay, F our function. So a function is a set A to set B is a relation. It just basically means that there is some kind of relationship between these little marble little guys and these marble little guys that assigns to each element X in set A exactly one element Y in set B. What they're saying is that for every element in set A, such as like this two, it's going to go to one of these little marbles over here. And maybe this guy will go to one marble um, over here. And maybe this guy will go to that marble over there. And maybe uh, this guy will go to a marble uh, right here. Now, let's, let's think about this though, okay? Because this word right here actually makes a big difference when it says exactly one element. Means that all of these marbles can only go to one of these other marble guys over here. Only one. And to demonstrate this, I think your book does a really good job of showing us the thing about a temperature over here and the time of the day. So let's think about this. Say if this is our set A, okay? By, by the way, our first set is called our um, X numbers. And then this is our set B, and they call our, our Y numbers. Now watch this. If we're at the same place, say if we're in Fontucky and we're at Hooper Hills High School right now, if it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, how many temperatures can it be at exactly 1 o'clock in the afternoon? How many temperatures? Can't it only be one temperature? It can't be, it can't be 9 degrees Celsius and 10 degrees Celsius all at the same time at the exact same location. Maybe in San Francisco and in Fontana, it could be different uh, degrees at the same time. But I'm talking about if you're at the same place at the same time, this is why at 1 at one o'clock, it could only be 9 degrees Celsius. And then look, at 2 o'clock, it could be only 13 degrees. At 4 o'clock, 15. At 3, 15. At 5, 12. At 6, uh, 10. Now look at this. You say, wait a minute. They're both going to 15. Listen. It could be 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and it could be 15 degrees Celsius. And then it could be at 3 o'clock, it could also be 15 degrees Celsius, right? The definition says that every 
x elements right here. Each each element x. Okay, this is these are my x numbers. Every one of these can only go to how many y values? It can only go to one. And look, this one only went to one. This two only went to one value. This four only went to one value. This three only went to one value. But what what you can't do is this. This is when when it's not a function. Is if I said, oh, and at one o'clock it was also twelve degrees. Okay, this is now not a function now, because one of our x values has how many y values? It has two. One can't go to nine, and one can't go. It can't go to both. It can only go to one. So let's just make this a clear-cut definition. The definition then of a function, okay, is every number in the x sets, okay, can only go to one y value. And that's it. So look, 1 goes to 9, 2 goes to 13, 4 goes to 15, 3 goes to 15. Every one of these, okay, every one of these guys right here, okay, don't they only go to one number, okay? And if that's the, if that's the case, then we say that, that it's a function, okay? This is a function right here, down here. This is what, it's a, a, what a function is. This is an example of one. But once I do this, this is now no longer a function because by definition, it says each element X in the set A, exactly one element Y in the set B. That means every one of these can only go to one Y value, but if we do a second line, now it's no longer a function. Okay? I hope I didn't confuse you. I hope that makes sense. A function is every X value only goes to one y value and that's what a function is okay so let's uh continue here we also have some other vocabulary terms so that's what a uh function was now let's go ahead and define what these other things are the set a is the domain meaning all these numbers in our first set is called our domain so this is why right here these numbers right here would be called our domain so all the all the x terms are called our domain and all the y numbers are called our range. So this will be our range values right here. Okay, so a few definition words right there. Function, domain, and range. And we're going to be dealing with these a lot, a lot more now. Okay, so let's go now actually down to example number one. And uh, we're supposed to test for a function. This is decide whether the relation represents y as a function of x. Okay, this is asking you this is a nerdy way of saying is this a function okay and the reason why that they word it like this is, is when they say is this right here decide whether this relationship represents y as a function of x it's because y depends on x for example say if i said y equals x plus one if you plug in any number in for x, such as like 1, that means my y value that I get depends on what number I put in for, y, for x, right? So if I plugged in 1 for x, then y is 2. So that's why we say that does y represent a function of x. So that's where that comes from, okay? So let's see here. If this is going to be a function, by definition, it means that every single one of these values right here, okay, every single one of these has to go to how many values? 1, so let's see here, 2 goes to 11, 2 goes to 10, wait a minute, whoa, 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 2 goes to 11 and 2 goes to 10, that right there, we can stop and say this is not a function, because by definition, every one of these values are only supposed to go to one value, Th think of it like this, if you like the little, uh, a little set A and then set B, right? So we had 2, 2, so we had 2, 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5, right? And then we have our set B, which is 11, we have 10, we have 8, 5, and 1. Okay, so check this out right here. That means 2 goes to 11 and 2 goes to 10. 
Remember how I said this can't happen. Every one of these values in x can only go to one y value. I mean, we, we see here that 3 goes to, to, uh, to 8. We see here that 5 goes to 1. And we see here that 4 goes to 5. Okay, everything else is cool except this. Th this is our problem right here, which is this is what constitutes not a function. Okay, so do you, so this may make a little more sense because you're used to seeing it like this, but, but this means the same thing. If they give it to you in a table, no, not even close, dude. This is not a function. Now, let's come over here. This is the same thing, okay? We can plot points and ask ourselves, do these points represent a function? Well, let's, well, let's look at this. This is the point 2, 3, right? 2, 3. And this is the point 1, 0. And that's the point 0, negative 1. And this is the point uh, negative 1, 0. And this is the point right here, uh, negative 2, 3. So the question is this now. If this is a function, by definition, all of my x values can only go to one y value. And, and let's see. Negative 2 only goes to 3. Negative 1 only goes to 0. 0 only goes to negative 1. 1 only goes to 0. And 2 goes to 3. That would be a function. Okay? We don't, we don't have, okay, where, where negative 2 goes to two numbers. So this would be a function. Let me just show you what a function would not look like if it was a if it was a graph like this. Like say if I plotted this point right here. Okay, say if this was part of the problem. This coordinate point is negative one, negative two, correct? Do you see why this would not be a function? Because look, negative one goes to zero, and wait a minute, negative one goes to negative two? Oh no. By definition, a function means that every x value only has one y value, but this right here has two. That means negative one goes to two different values. So this would not be a function, but this wasn't part of our problem right here. Okay, so I'm going to take that out. So this problem right here is a function. So I'm going to say um, is a function right here. Okay, so I hope the definition of a function is a little more clear. And... Um, uh, and yeah, I guess that's it. Cool.